Socialite Lena Nalidova takes us on a tour of her wardrobe. It may be minus 20 outside, but like many Russian women, it hasn't dulled her love for skimpy clothes. I don't like clothes that reveal everything, but I do like clothes that cover just a little bit. But it precisely shows of flesh like this, championed by Russian high society and the fashion industry that the Russian Orthodox Church have real problems with. They want Russians to think long and hard about the social impact of their dress decisions. The Orthodox Church is steeped in tradition. It advocates long skirts and headscarves for women and conservative clothes for men. But many secular and religious Russians responded angrily when senior cleric Vselovod Chaplin claimed wearing a miniskirt could incite rape. If a woman provokes people to think that she's a prostitute or something like that, uh, she does bear her part of responsibility. I'm not justifying rape or improper behavior of men, but uh, it's a part of the tradition of every religion that a woman should be humble. Fashion industry experts hold a very different view. This is what we're supposed to look like in summer. Where choosing what to wear is less of a test of modesty and more an exercise in good taste. Obviously, if you look a little bit ridiculous and you have humongously fat legs and you wear a miniskirt, yeah. it does look ridiculous, but yeah. it's the right of every person to choose. I mean, yeah. we have men nowadays wearing high heels and leggings. Not so long ago, the communists denounced denim as an emblem of Western decadence. Today, 80% of Russians say they're orthodox, but few are likely to surrender relatively newfound freedoms or fashions. Neve Barker, Al Jazeera, Moscow. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Tuesday, March 8th, 2011. I'm Darko. This is part two of this news bulletin for today, everyone. Uh, please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com. That is ggnonline.com. Um, all the links will be posted for all these videos, so check them out in the video's description on YouTube. And uh, we're going to start off with this article, EU Plans Boosts in Employment Rates. It says here the EU has announced a target employment rate of 70% by 2020 throughout its uh, member states in a long-term attempt to tackle joblessness. I'm going to lower the color there. World set for new economic model, and we keep hearing this, uh, following the collapse of communism and the exasperation, exasperating financial crisis in the capitalist world, the global economy is bound to offer a new model, a political analysis says. And what will it be? Well, if you listen to Ellen Watt at all, you know that it's going to be what? It's going to be a hybrid of what? Communism and capitalism. That's what it is. So that's what the new economic model is. And that's what World War II was. And that's what uh, communist Russia and uh, fascist Italy and Germany was. It was, and I, to a certain extent, we were fascist here in the United States too. So um, it was basically a test. I mean, they call it democracy. So they were testing out, you know, uh, all different types of uh, systems. It says, uh, since the fall of the Soviet Union and the socialist system and almost the crash of the capitalist system, I think we are due for a new economic system and model for the world to survive, said political analysis. Uh, Mohammed Awis in the Press TV interview. Otherwise, I don't think we're going to survive. It says here, Chinese leaders stress the importance of economic restructuring. So I'm sure that's what uh, uh, Hu Hinto uh, is uh, talking about when they say, uh, a new economic restructuring, right? Said uh, on Tuesday, call for greater determination efforts to achieve substantial progress and transform the country's mode of economic development. So, and he said, new achievements must be made in the stable development of agricultural and animal husbandry, continuous growth of farmers' income, and co comprehensive progress in agricultural and pastoral areas. We move on to China should diversify foreign exchange reserves to keep safe, leading economists say. And what are they alluding to? Well, they're talking about either dumping U.S. dollars and or and or um, uh, building up in gold. So as China needs to diversify its massive holding of foreign exchange reserves to prevent consistent devaluation and volatile global economic conditions. A leading Chinese economist said on Tuesday, quote, the portfolio of China's foreign exchanges should be adjusted based on changing conditions. Says here, quote, China should moderately increase the size of gold in its foreign exchange reserves, said Li. And um, 
and yeah, they uh, basically they've been uh, they've been buying up some gold lately too. I've been covering that uh, every what uh, I think twice in the past three or four months. I've covered them buying up gold, and then uh, also uh, selling treasuries. So they've also since uh, November they've been uh, dumping treasuries. So and it says here there's a 60 percent chance of a Chinese banking crisis by 2013. I've covered this as well. Is that it's a possibility that the uh, Chinese economy is not uh, is not going to uh, stay on the same path as it as it is right now. China's financial system uh, have been classified as MP13 since last June. This that means that there is a 60 uh, 60 chance of banking crisis by mid 2013, according to comments today from Fitch Rating Senior Director Richard Fox of Bloomberg. Historically, an MP13 classification suggests that crisis will occur within three years as it did with Ireland and uh, Iceland. It says China's vulnerability is related to out of control. Was, that's what I was going to mention too, the real estate lending. And they just ha uh, hampered down uh, the, the, the communist state uh, just past the housing thing. So, And it says here it's going to basically it's going to manipulate price, housing prices, and all sorts of non-free market stuff. Fox tells Bloomberg, Fitch sees the risk of holes in bank balance sheets that uh, should a property bubble burst. And it says Chinese banks fuel record property price gains by extending a record 17 million yuan of loans over 2009-2010 or under a stimulus program that propelled the nation through the financial crisis. And uh, it says, then we have proposed law would hold banks accountable. City council members gathered on the steps of City Hall on Monday calling for greater accountability from banks and the passage of the Responsible Banking Act, RBA. The law recently introduced in the council would use the city's economic leverage to require that banks give reasonable loans and better banking services to working class and low income New Yorkers. Again, more non free market legislation. Consumers' purses remain shut. Tight, and it says here business confidence is tumbling as cautious consumers rein in spending in the face of continued uh, interest rate uncertainty. McDonald's, this is big news, I guess. McDonald's February sales rose 3.9 percent. U.S. is weak. It says McDonald's uh, same store sales rose 3.9 percent in February, more than expected despite U.S. results missing Wall Street's views. Shares dipped. Uh, to, uh, was at almost 1 percent in recent pre-market trading. And uh, also, what it doesn't mention here is that uh, Subway actually took over McDonald's in the fast food chain, and then they said uh, it was also reported in the news that uh, that uh, it was in China and Asia mostly where Subway was big. And it's funny because I, I read a story too about how McDonald's was uh, was actually hurting and uh, losing sales and profits in China, and uh, that they actually prefer KFC over McDonald's. So they like. Subway and KFC, I guess. It says here, PepsiCo raises Tropicana orange juice prices. And uh, says PepsiCo is raising prices for its Tropicana juice line by as much as 8% after record cold temperatures slash this season's orange crop due to global warming. It says here, Zippo preps, I was being sarcastic, Zippo preps for a post-smoker world. First I said, I thought this said a pot smoker world, but it says here for 78 years, Zippo manufacturing has been known for its windproof cigarette lighters, which are fashioned from brass and uh, chrome at a factory in northwest pa Pennsylvania. But it says uh, now it's going to start selling fragrances. So I guess it's, uh, it's uh, hurting. Um, because of the cigarette industry, people are cutting back on the corporate uh, toxic cigarettes, and uh, so now they're hurting. It says Ford, Ford Chief gets stock awards, and it says uh, the Ford Motor Company has awarded Chief Executive Alan Mulley with a stock worth $33 million after taxes, part of a series of grants given to more than a dozen company executives, and uh, they posted one of their first profits in a long time, them and GN, so... They just start doling out the profits to the bigwigs right away. And it uh, says here, BP directors take bonuses for a year of uh, Gulf of Mexico oil spill. Two of BP's most senior directors have taken bonus payments for their work in the year of the Gulf of Mexico oil spill, although new chief executive Bob Dudley waived his reward. Wyoming plays it cool. This was interesting. State hopes brisk climate, low energy costs will attract huge data centers. And what the heck do you think those huge data centers are? Um, well, they're going to be like what uh, is in Utah, a big, humongous NSA spy center. And they refer to it as a spy center in Utah. And they have a huge blimp, spy surveillance blimp that they just launched as well in Utah. 
I think it's Ogden, uh, Utah. And so now we have this uh, little uh, data center going to be going up in Wyoming because of cool weather, right? And I drove through Wyoming. It is pretty cold and windy there, and it would be a good place to store a bunch of uh, uh, mainframe computers and servers to store information for the government. But what do you think is going to be on those uh uh, in those databases, it's going to be all your personal information from Facebook and Twitter and emails and text messages and phone calls. It says here, U.S. Mint initiates process for major U.S. coinage overhaul. The U.S. Mint has begun the process of research and evaluation, eventually setting the stage for a new coin composite or compositions, as well as potentially changing bullion coin uh, allocations. You can go in there. And uh, check this out, talking about alternative metallic coinage materials. Not sure what they're going to use, but they're probably going to stop uh, copper. I'm not sure if they've eliminated copper completely. They probably have uh, copper mixed with something else now and not pure copper, but they're probably going to must uh, either take the, the copper penny out completely or they're going to change uh, what it's made, its materials because copper is just record high and uh, the copper and the penny is probably worth more than the penny itself. Says here, Mexico trucks may roll into U.S. at mid-year. Mexican cargo trucks are expected to roll across the international borders between the Mexico and U.S. in about four months. And uh, well, that's all part of the North American Union, right? Says uh, Rothschild and Sons are moving in for the kill. Witnesses, uh, they work all over the globe, and right now it says, I'll just read this first paragraph here. The World uh, Bank (IMF) is owned and controlled by N.M. Rothschild and Sons, plus 30 to the 40 of the wealthiest people in the world for 150 years they have planned to take over the planet through money the monetary system they're talking about the former chief economist of the world bank joseph stiglitz was fired in 2000 and he pointed out top executives that every country the imf world bank forced their way into ended up with a crashed economy destroyed government and some even broke out in riots former president of the world banks sir james uh, wolfenson would not comment on his dismissal before stiglitz was fired he took a large stack of secret documents out of the world bank it says these secret documents from the world bank and the imf reveal that imf required nations to quote or not quote, but one to sign a secret uh, agreements containing 111 destructive items. And it says, number two, to agree to sell off their key assets, water, electric, gas. That's talking about IMF receivers, receivership and the privatization uh, step where everything, all your local mun municipalities are privatized. And, of course, they fix them up with your tax dollars, and then they sell it really cheap to a private company, and then they jack the rates up. That's the process. To agree to take economic steps, which are devastating to the nations involved. Okay. Check that out. Links posted. Goldman Sachs hires a law firm to shut blogger sites. So some blogger uh, created a site uh, that was uh, facts about Goldman Sachs. Web address was goldmansachs666.com. And, of course, it was taken down, right? And uh, here we go. Greek debt price soars as Moody cuts ra uh, credit rating below Egypt. Then we have Boeing wins $10 billion deal from Chinese airlines. China-U.S. aviation deal faces scrutiny. So I guess if, uh, you know, that's the thing. You know, Boeing and them are selling uh, jets between uh, you know the Chinese and the U.S. and if we go to war, do you think they're still going to sell jets? Well, yeah, Boeing will, and, and Lockheed Martin they'll be selling jets to China who will bomb Americans and then they'll build jets for Americans who will bomb the Chinese. So, and that's what was going on in World War II with Ford and them. China U.S. aviation deal faced a scrutiny. Covered that dramatic photos of the work of work and life in the capital of Bangladesh. You can go through there and check those out. Uh, some pretty uh, recycling plant, pretty crazy, working at a recycling plant. This guy, little kid's making balloons. And then this kid's, uh, I think he's working balloons as well, just horrible conditions. U.S. farmers fear the return of the Dust Bowl. And mad as hell actor Paul Hogan compares Australian tax office to the Taliban. Thieves snatch $2.8 from Spanish nuns. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.